On today's show, it was an eventful morning at Senators practice, but head coach Travis Green just provided the latest injury update. And we have a very special guest today. It's Menno Versteeg back on the podcast. He gives us his boots on the ground report of that Thanksgiving game, what new jersey he's going to get, and info about his new tour. All that and more on today's Locked On Sens. This is Brady Kachuk, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators podcast. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. You are locked on to the Ottawa Senators, the only daily podcast covering the Sens. On the outskirts of enemy territory, I'm Ross Levitan, alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. You can follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter and LockedOn.Senators on Instagram. You can find us free and available everywhere you get podcasts, including on YouTube, where a like, comment, subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. Today is Wednesday, October 16th, and Pilsy, even though Linus Allmark was absent from practice, Head coach Travis Green says he skated on his own today and could be ready tomorrow against New Jersey. Yeah, and we had a couple other updates as well. Artem Zub looks like he's going to be out a week with a concussion. Kind of what we expected, so that's not too harsh of news. And then we dodged a bullet. sounded like Thomas Shabbat collided with JBD, and then he had to go to the bench, and then he went to the room. So Sens fans are like, we cannot be without Shabbat and Zub this early. But Travis Green squashed all the panic and said he's totally fine. It's not going to be a big deal. So really, we're looking at Zub out a week. All Mark Ross, I think they should just let him have Thursday off and bring him back for Saturday. Obviously, that's not uh, best for the team's immediate success. But when you're dealing with a strain for your number one star goaltender, let's give it a little bit extra time rather than put him right back in there and possibly uh, risk re-injuring it. Devils obviously a good team coming to town. They're coming off a 4-2 loss to Carolina yesterday night. Markstrom still looked good in a losing effort. You'd like to see the two best Swedish goalies in the NHL going head-to-head, of course. But I agree with you because Saturday afternoon, you've got a divisional game against Tampa. You want Linus Allmark to be in goal for that one. And then a tough road trip. Look, the Utah Hockey Club started off real hot. I know they lost their last game, but they've started off hot. And then you've got Vegas and the Colorado Avalanche. You've also got two days off between both the Tampa game game and between the game in Utah and Vegas. So that gives a lot of rest days and recovery days for the goaltending. Now, Anton Forsberg, six saves on nine shots. It wasn't good last game against the LA Kings. And don't look at the last time he played New Jersey at the end of last season, where he also allowed three goals on nine shots and was pulled. The Senators fought back to make it a one-goal game. You may remember that one more fondly as the game where Brady Kachuk had 16 hits. But Forsberg did have two strong starts the end of the season after that game, and he looks like he will start tomorrow. I'd be surprised if it's Linus Allmark, but this is an important game for Anton Forsberg because the, the loud noise you hear from the fan base is going to get way louder if he can't come through another home game too at the CTC. Yeah, and I mean, look, obviously it was bad, his first start. But it's one start. You got to give a little bit more of a leash to your $2.7 million backup goalie than one bad start. So I think, honestly, Ross, it might be what's best. He has that break. He knows, all right, tough start for me. I got to be better in practice. I'm probably going to be the guy up against the New Jersey Devils to redeem myself. So this is an opportunity for Anton Forsberg to step up. And he's got to be able to provide Linus Allmark the relief that he needs. That's honestly Anton Forsberg's number one job is be there when Allmark isn't ready or can't be or needs a break. So it's time to do his job. All right, Linus Allmark, obviously the number one uh, cause for concern, but at least he's skating. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a long-term thing. And maybe that's the reason why he hasn't been with the team the last couple of days skating on his own where he's not going to push it and not going to make it worse. We know strains can get 
worse and linger. We saw that last year with Tim Stutzla. We've seen that over the years with Thomas Shabbat and different things where they play through it, but it affects their quality on the ice. So I'm talking myself into Forzy tomorrow, but my goodness, those first five shots are going to be extremely nerve-wracking tomorrow night. Another injury update as it seems like the infirmary is filling up quick. Good thing they upgraded the medical facilities at the Canadian Tire Center. Ridley Gregg, who was initially slated to be out one to two weeks. Travis Green saying, quote, he's progressing and we expect him to be skating sooner rather than later. So hopefully by the time they go on this road trip and start it in Utah next Tuesday uh, evening, you want to have as close to a full roster as possible. And if it is one week for Artem Zub, you're looking at that as the target date to be back a week from Monday. Now, again, concussions. You don't want to push it. Zub has had a concussion history previously with that Perron play from last year. So you want to be extra cautious, but with the caveat that there's not a lot of depth behind Zub and he is a critical piece. So it's going to be it's going to be next man up mentality for the Ottawa Senators. It has to be. Look, I'm not going to apologize for being 2 and 1 through 3 games, but every team in the East is finding points. Last night every divisional opponent got 2 points. You have to maintain pace. It's an everyday league and they're going to have to play better defensively if they want to get 2 points against the New Jersey Devils team that's already played a ton of games. Look, I know that they were overseas and they got those 2 games in against the the Buffalo Sabres, but Pilsy this is going to be their seventh game of the season. Jeez. And it's the fourth for the Ottawa Senators. That's great. I mean, Tampa has only played two games, right? Well, they had one postponed. So at least there's an out of their control reason why they've only played two games. Like they went to Europe, came back and have played more games in North America than the Ottawa Senators. Like that makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. It's a little weird there. Uh, speaking of guys that have to step up though, Forsberg, obviously one of them. This is a big opportunity for JBD. Obviously, uh, Zub out a week, if that's what it is. It's not that long of a time. He's only going to get a couple games in. Looks like he's paired with Tyler Clevin on that bottom pair. So a little no Dak sends action for you there, Ross. But this is a very big opportunity for JBD because he doesn't know how many opportunities he's going to get. It seems at least for the start of the season, the team is favoring Travis Hamannick. So he's on the outside looking in and he needs to put his foot in the door and keep that door open for himself. You mentioned it. Travis Hamannick paired with Jake, Jake Sanderson in this practice today. The other D pairs, Thomas Shabbat with Nick Jensen, Jensen and Tyler Clevin with JBD. Now, Pilsy already mentioned Shabbat left practice, but his quote, Perfectly fine, but that's why there's an asterisk next to his name there. Up front, no changes. Tim Stutzla between Brady Kachuk and Claude Giroux. Josh Norris centering Noah Gregor and Drake Batherson. Shane Pinto, you'll hear a lot about him later this episode, between David Perron and Michael Amadio. And then Adam Gaudet is centering Nick Cousins and Zach Gretzky. Sorry, McEwen, two goals in five minutes. Is that good? The goaltenders, Anton Forsberg and Mad Sogard. So as you alluded to yesterday, Pilsy, it was an inconsequential send down for both Gaudet and Sogard. They're right back up at practice, and we expect both to be in the lineup. Now, obviously, we expect Forsberg to start, but we expect both Sogard and Gaudet to dress for tomorrow night's game. Yeah, like I wouldn't even dress Allmark uh, for tomorrow. Oh, game. definitely. No, 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 no. If, if he's not starting, he should be up in the press box or in at least in the recovery room, maybe in the gym, getting a quick stretch in. Yeah, agreed. Side note, how sick is that photo of Timmy with the tinted visor? I'm all for tinted Timmy. I, I love it. I think it's a new persona, a new alias for him. And he's on a revenge tour this season, which has already started off pretty hot for the young German. Tied for seventh in the National Hockey League in go in points this season with six in three games. And Pilsy, I'll do you one better. He's tied for third in points per game. With two points per game. Only Artemi Panarin and Nikita Kucherov. Ever heard of them? Decent. Only those two are ahead of Tim Stutzla in points per game in the tinted visor era. We're in our friend of the show era. Yes. And that means Menno Versteeg is back. And we're going to check in with Menno throughout the season. An absolute passionate Ottawa Senators fan. And I love that whether he's on tour with Colorado back in the day, whether he's doing his own thing now, whether he's opening for Tokyo Police Club, he's always rocking his Sens hat. And now we got to decide what jersey is he going to add to his collection. His wife, you might know her from Schitt's Creek, Annie Murphy. She bought a jersey 
at the game over the weekend. I want you to pause the episode here if you're listening on YouTube and comment below what jersey you think Annie picked out. The surprise is there's no surprise. Pillsy, what uh, what what vibes do you get when you chat with Menno? Because I know you were a Colorado guy way back in the day. Oh, yeah, big time. Juliet, oh, so it goes. Classic bangers from Colorado. Born yesterday is my favorite. Nice, nice. Um, He's just he's just a chill vibes guy, good energy. And, uh, yeah, I, I love hearing about musicians that still rep their sports teams hard when they're on tour. Awesome conversation coming up with him. And a reminder that if you want to get to know his music or vibe out to it right now, the description below, we've got a link to his latest music all-time guy fits the vibe of the show very well and let's get to it here is menno versteeg today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at prize picks it's the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billion dollars awarded in winnings Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. You can win 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks puts their members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When your picks hit, you can get your money in as quick as 15 minutes. Sign up instantly to get $50 when you play five. You don't even need to win to receive the 50. It's guaranteed. Prize picks is the best way to win real money this football season. You got to check what players are hot, who's going off, who's got easy matchups that week. Do it all on prize picks. So download the app today and use code locked on NHL to get 50 bucks instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup check it out today guys it's prize picks run today, your game today's episode is also brought to you by game time game time is the ticketing app whenever you need tickets to a live event whether it's sports comedy theater you name it you can get your tickets over at game time they always have the last minute tickets at the best prices Adam Newton messaged me, goes, boys, thanks for the tip about game time. I was able to get tickets, 24 USD for two tickets and throw 316 for the home opener because he waited until the very last minute. Over at game time, they've got game time picks. You flip that on and they cut out the fluff and only focus in on what you want to see near you. So go check them out at game time. And because you're a listener of Locked On Senators, you are entitled to $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app, use promo code Locked On NHL with a new account, and get $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, terms apply. That's code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. What time is it? It's game time. All right, here he is, Men Over Steak. All right, we now welcome a very, very special guest back to Locked On Senators. It is the lead singer of the Men Over Stieg band, Men Over Stieg. Welcome back to the show. How are you doing, man? Oh my God, I've been counting the days till we got to see, till I got to see your smiling faces again, especially after a big win that we we're all at the game. I know you were there on Monday, back home for Thanksgiving. Tell us about your experience in that wild eight-seven win against LA. Oh my God. I, it was one of the most exciting hockey games I've been to in my life. And like, you know, for the third game of the season, you know, people are like, Oh, it's the third game of the season, but it mattered to me. Not only because I was there, um, but like they, I, I really, really, really wanted to see a win, you know, early in the year. And especially, um, especially that one, it was like a game of pond hockey. Goaltending was optional for sure. These these yeah. afternoon games during the week, I know it was a Thanksgiving holiday, but it feels like the afternoon games, it all starts a little bit slow, like the players don't know. And then when Tanner, you know, runs over Artem Zub, you get the early fight. All yeah. of a sudden, didn't you feel like the crowd just kind of locked in once McEwen dropped the gloves there? Totally. It's like, okay, now we got a hockey game. And was it ever wild? Yeah, so fun. It's so nice when you get to be at those crazy ones. It's amazing. Like the atmosphere in the CTC. Let's start with that. Because when's the last time you were at a game? Were you there at all last year? Uh, It's been a while. 
it's been a while. I don't think I've been in maybe three seasons. I used to go all the time, all the time. Back in the day when they played Colorado at every game. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Well, no, because you, you compare what you last remember, the atmosphere in the rink. Has it evolved for you at all? Has the team's now got a little bit of heart, not hype, but heart to them? Oh, I'm I am loving it. I'm just real. I'm really loving this team. It's just like I feel like they've got all players I really stand behind. Like I, I haven't been more excited about any team since I was, you know, eight years old cheering for the Montreal Canadiens before the Sens even existed. Now at that game, was there a point where you know it, it wasn't a hot start for the Sens and they they weren't able to get a lead till way later in the game? Did you think this was over? early or did you have the confidence that they're going to figure this out and did you assume they're going to win eight seven in overtime <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> no i definitely didn't like i was trying to think when was the, f- the first lead was seven six right was yeah that the first lead that yeah. was the that first is lead. wild just chasing it all game like that and like you know just just that up and down of like you know they would tie it up and then oh no but the fact, you know, after they did it a few times, like, oh, they can just keep doing this all day long. I I, I had this sense of confidence. I felt like I kind of knew they were going to do it. And and people, the crowd was with them too, you know. There wasn't yep. that feeling of giving up in the building that you get sometimes when you're like, oh, this is just not going to happen. The they, team had to jump in their step, um, you know, and, and everyone was like, you know, they were they were playing like they wanted it. Did you feel though like they needed that Jake Sanderson goal when they're down two nothing? Like yes. they needed that. Yeah, that was one. that the, the closest. I I was like, if they don't get the next one, it's gonna be a pretty flat afternoon. <laughs> and what a snipe that was, eh? Jeez, he's good. Ooh. How much fun is he to watch? Because like you look at the decor, they go down to five D. We talked about Zub getting out of the game, but Jake Sanderson, I'm always I'm already saying like Pilsy, you might be right, man. Pilsy was fighting me on who should be number two. For the Sens organizational value rankings we do every summer. Brady, number one, obviously the captain. But, yeah. like, he's closed the gap on Tim Stutzla to me. And that's no disrespect to Timmy, but he's that good. I think so, too. I am um, I I feel like I'm due for a new jersey this year. Ooh. And, yeah, I'm wearing a Value Village um, Kachuk that is uh, – still he's got the A on it. Okay, you know, that, hey, that's that's classy. That's which I really like. Yeah. It's very cool. It's like it's. I mean, it is a real jersey. It's not some knockoff like my old Alfredson one that I got in China. <laughs> uh, <laughs> did I ever tell you about that one? No, I'd like to hear though. Oh my god, we played Colorado, played in China, and um, the guys who own the bar. We did this whole tour, but there was a bunch of Canadian guys who owned like this bar that we were playing at. It was a cool place. They were awesome, but no joke, they're uh, they're business why they could afford a bar they had a knockoff nhl jersey factory and so they were selling like all the fakes um you know on the internet and stuff and this was 2009 so it's like i feel like the crackdown wasn't as hard as it is now so when we got there we all had these like you know perfect like you know fighting straps everything like top of the line nhl jerseys that said you know they even said like made in canada like everything (laughs) all the holograms and they were made in this factory in china and um, we all had different ones, and mine was an Albertson one, and I was so excited, and I wore it to my first Sens game, and it was the wrong color. Like, you can't even – you couldn't tell until you went in an actual, like, arena full of Sens, but it was, like, a darker maroon. People kept coming up to me and like, when was that jersey from? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's when you got to have the uh color shade like for painting walls when you're buying knockoff jerseys yeah. just do the shade comparison like that, yeah. that's they had work. funny stories about all the, these jerseys because you know they they would um they would uh like contract out to these different factories uh and some of them would be good at making jerseys and other ones wouldn't and so often they would like you know and what the guy said probably happened with that is like it was a red from another team that it may have been like Arizona or something. I don't know that they had left over because they'd made a bunch of that. And they're like, oh, we'll just use this red. It's close enough. Just slap a Sens logo on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they apparently they cut a lot of corners like that. They also told me a story. He went to pick up, um, uh, it was a huge order. He was doing like a thousand or two thousand like Joe Thornton jerseys. And he went to pick them all up and they were the, the N was an M. They were like, so he picked up like 2000 Joe Thornton jerseys. No. <laughs> But hey, it's, uh, that's the karma you get when you're making knockoff jerseys. 
Exactly. Hey, that's the price you pay for it. But I like how you're you're a captain guy. You've got the Brady Kachuk jersey. You got the Daniel Alfredson jersey. Are those the two in your collection, or are there any more sitting back there? Um, no, it's the only I've got. Like a couple other, like uh, I've got some like practice jersey type things. But right. yeah, I think I'm ready for a new jersey this year. But who so who's it gonna, gonna be? be? Well, should we put a poll up and let the citizens decide? That's kind of fun. Like you know, an early favorite. I've never had a goalie jersey before, and I love throwing my faith behind um, Allmark. I love his vibe, like just all the yeah. interviews and stuff. Like he just seems like such a good guy. He's got a sense of humor. He just seems like my type of people. I just really like him. Not to mention he's playing. So, but I feel like you got to give it a bit of time before you do something like that. So, well, he well, already signed the extension though, Menno. You, you got four extra years of security. That's nice. I know, but like, do we see how he goes? I don't know. I well, mean, I already got mine. Uh, the second he signed the extension, uh, yeah. I ordered one online. And you that's did. also my, there it is. That's my first goalie jersey for the Sens as well. So we, we could rock that. You could get the black one. We could be a good combo. Okay. It's almost completely sold that that's what I want to do. Like Sanderson was my, you know, I, I play forward when I'm a, when I play hockey. And so I've always gotten like, you know, my favorite players have always been like, you know, Sanders and Wingers and stuff. But, so I love mixing it up this year. I think I got to mix it up. Yes. So yeah, should it be Allmark? I, I think, I think so. The black Allmark or Sanderson. I feel like you can't go wrong either yeah. way. Sandy signed for eight yeah. seasons yeah. from now. So that's yeah. a pretty like locked yeah. in. He's going to be the guy on the back end. But yeah. I mean, the news came out at 8.15 my time. And you, you saw the timestamp there. 15 minutes later, Pilsy pulled the trigger on the jersey. So he had no hesitation. We absolutely love that. I said I would do it the second the extension was announced. So I did it as quick as possible. Uh, yeah. I love that. Okay, I'm following your in your footsteps. Okay. Maybe the poll is just good decision or bad decision. Well, get the wife uh, a Sanderson one then too, and you can have, be one happy family. Uh, Any bottom first jersey ever uh, in, at the game, and she got um, – she got a uh, uh, Pinto. Pinto. Oh, okay. oh, ladies of love course. Shane Pinto. I would say. I mean, he's the he's one of the most beautiful players in the NHL. He's maybe he's one of the most handsome players in the last decade to play in the NHL. <laughs> he's this generation's yeah. Mike Fisher. It's yes, the exactly. love around Ottawa. Same number two now, number twelve. And look, yeah. he got high sticked in the first game. It was only a two minute penalty. I said it should have been an extra two because you high stick that beautiful face. Like, come it on, really yeah. should. that should be a league wide. Um, yeah. It should be a league wide rule that, um, yeah, you get him in the face. If it, if it leaves a scar, you you're out for the rest of the season. <laughs> you're done. Forty one game suspension, maybe. He looks like a he looks like a young boy, like going into World War One, all fresh faced, <laughs> like he's gonna do something brave amazing well hey you mentioned annie was at the game too and the way that they led into putting her on the jumbotron was am i right you co-wrote a little bit alexis i did yeah okay that's awesome because i don't know if you saw the video the sends posted after she was vibing to the song before looking up and seeing that she was on nice. camera that was amazing sometimes when you hear a song that you know you just start kind of bouncing along with it without even realizing what it is but I think it's pretty funny. Yeah, that I, that was uh, Nick from Colorado um, wrote that with Annie and I. Um, and right after they played that, they played "Born Yesterday," and no one no one noticed or cared. I was vibing to that too. I knew you were in the building. You tagged us in the post there on your way to the rake. And yeah, I was, I knew it, man. I know a good Colorado track when I hear one. And we're gonna get into a little bit of that because you've got your first solo album that's why i jokingly called you the lead singer of the men over steeg band but Thank before you. we get to that i just want to know like how important is it to, to you to rep the ottawa senators everywhere because we saw you do a show in bc our buddy steve on sends was there you're still rocking the sends hat everywhere you go eh yeah it's it's becoming kind of like a thing that i really really like i i love traveling with it like a lot of people like the Sens, you know, and they, I like what they represent. I love the new motto for sure. I really feel like it's something that I believe in kind of. That's why I was so excited when, when I saw that the other day. Um, yeah. Heart over hype. And there uh, it's something I just kind of feel I like to represent uh, everywhere I go and you get a bit of shit for it, but you know, we're not doing well enough 
yet <laughs> to get a whole lot of shit for it. Um, I'm I'm starting to think that that maybe though, as we start to do better this season, which I really think we're gonna do, that people are gonna give me a harder time about it. But uh, I'm ready for it. Hope you're enjoying our chat with Menno. We'll get right back to it. But first, Pilsy's got a word from one of our favorite sponsors. Yes, this episode is also brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. NFL fans, you want to start the season off with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So if you think you know how the game's going, you can sense the momentum. You got a hunch in the middle of the game. You can check out all the latest stats, view play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. A couple of trades happening in the NFL. Make sure you're following along the future lines. Maybe you can uh cash in on a hot team getting a new pickup in the middle of the season and if you're starting you can get started with two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first five dollar bet so go check it out today guys fanduel.com all right now back to our chat with menno now, I wonder from your perspective, Mano, do you see similarities in the sports community and the music community? Like when you like you play big crowds, big crowds come to the game. Like what's the kind of connections there between music and sports for you? Uh, that's an interesting question. I mean, interesting. so many musicians I know like wish that they were hockey players that's for sure especially in canada yep. um and really follow hockey and it really gives you something when you're traveling all the time like it's a really it's a way to really stay connected with home and cheer for your team and so so often you'll see you know bands on tour with any sport really but they have their team that they follow and you know before every game when they're playing they're you know crowded around in in the backstage around a laptop or something yep. and they're watching their home team and it's a it's a way to really stay connected to home that I think is really important. So I think that's one of the reasons that a lot of bands like really stick to their team um, because it's so important to have those roots when you're traveling around so much. Yeah. Um, and a, a lot of, uh, I know a lot of hockey players too, that like, you know, they play guitar on the side as a way to relax. And it's like, so they have a, like a, res- a respect for the music and, or you listen to music to get pumped up for the game. Um, I was just watching that new face-off show and nice. uh, Swayman playing guitar after the game. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, what would your pump-up song be? I was gonna say, yeah, if you had a goal song, because I know you said Ooh, you play four song, when, like you're playing, uh, when you're My playing. When you're playing song, there's one. There's one greatest pump-up song of all time to do anything. Sometimes I'll like, I'll uh, go play road hockey with Roger the dog. Um, in the, and we put on – we go in the underground parking garage if it's, like, really crappy out. And uh, we um, we put on Thunderstruck by ACDC. That's pretty uh, good. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes I just, like, open the car and, and the um, – and like put the put the trunk up and just like turn on acdc full blast and like all the neighbors are like oh there they are again and we're just like playing <laughs> ball hockey with acdc cranking it's like one of the greatest greatest things oh you can there's do. Mano again trying to recreate the josh norris overtime winner against the kings there he is <laughs> going five hole 44 years old acting like a 12 year old in manatee Oh, yeah, that's buddy, right. that's what it's all about. And that's something else that I love about sports. I find it keeps your childhood dream alive, right? Where you're watching these kids live out their dreams and you're following along, you're super invested in it. Yeah, yeah. No, I love it so much. It's like, it, I still have actual dreams where I'm like, you know, the, the sense of asked me or whatever. Like, I was good buds where I am good buds still with Zach Smith who played for a while. And like, once in a while he'll appear, like, they will like come in. I was like, they called me, they need you. They need you. This the, the fourth line center's gone down. Like the boys, and I'll wake up all excited that like you know get to play. And they're like, oh no, that's not real. But uh, there's something cool about that, you know that um, that that uh, just what what that these players, you know, they're half my age now, and that they can still be so inspiring and like such role models in a cool way. I think that's pretty neat. So I know that you said it's been a few years since you've been at the CTC, but you, if I'm not mistaken, got to see one of the best games in the last couple of years at Madison Square Garden. Was that the game where Brady Kachuk fought at center ice? You know what? I cannot. You'd had a couple. I, there was a lot going on that okay. day. And it's, I, I remember it was, uh, I feel like he, I, 
I feel like that seems about right. But there well, was like, this is uh, how I found it. Somebody had and your wife Annie has amazing facial reactions as per if you're watching on YouTube. <laughs> the Sens are losing three two. All of a sudden they come back and win the game five three. Um, what was that experience like cheering on the Sens on the road? Did people give you a hard time? Oh yeah, a very hard time. Um, it was uh, you know, and I realized it too. Like we were guests of the Rangers, uh, which is. A really yeah, we were giving you we were giving you a hard time you weren't wearing your sense hat yeah it, it was really amazing i mean i was at first uh, <laughs> and, and they i mean they spoiled us and it, it, that is a class a sports franchise of all time you know and they did so much history and we're sitting in their seats and we're eating their food and drinking their beers backstage and everyone was so gracious they knew we were sense fans you know they yeah. know we're from ottawa and uh, there to watch our team, but also support the home team. And and honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't feel like I, but at first so I, was, I was wearing my sense hat and this guy who's kind of working the, our section, he looks like he's, you know, he's saying hello to all these like businessmen working, walking in. They all know him by name. You can tell he's been there for the last 50 years or whatever. He looks at me and he goes like, get rid of that. You know, he points <laughs> at me, oh. and I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. You know, oh, you know, it's good fun. And, uh, after a little bit, um, he, uh, he, they, I guess he got some Rangers stuff sent up to us. So, you know, and, but I didn't put it on. None of us did. And then he kind of came up to me and he was really nice. He's like, and he's like, you're a guest in our, in our building. He's like, you do the oh, right he's thing. He's playing the guilt trip. Nah, you know what? I, oh I, I totally am for it. You know, like yeah, that's fair. I, it's not in the playoffs. Bad. If it's playoffs, no. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't care if I get banned from that place for life if it's playoffs. <laughs> but you know, the, it was something. There was something about it where I was like, you know what? This that's a classy thing to do, and it's classy for them to, you know, have us. And I was like, it's a classy thing to put on their hat and say thank you. You know, and I am a fan of the Rangers. They're not my sins, but you know, it's a good. It's I, I love the history in that hockey team and. um I am one of the people who everywhere I go, I, I legit am a fan of the NHL. I'm a fan of these players who work so hard. Like some of them I can't stand because they're total dickheads. And some of them I love so much because, you know, they're such great players and they represent everything I um, I, I want to be and can be such great role models. And I'm not afraid to say like I'm a fan of the league. Yeah. yeah. And if we're power ranking original six teams, I'll tell you they're not bottom three. No, yeah, that's that's Detroit, Toronto, Montreal, right away. So yeah. if, if hey, if we're looking at a historic place to see a game too, like MSG has to be up there. Have you been able to see the Sens anywhere else on the road? Uh, I saw them in LA years ago. Um, that that building is so can be so boring, especially I when they didn't agree. care about Ottawa. It was just like total snooze fest. Um, where else have I seen them on the road? I. I have over the years some like random places on tour, like, but this is going far back. I think I yeah. saw them maybe in St. Louis, like okay. on tour, but like years and years, years ago. Yeah. Well, but, yeah it feels most- like now, it feels like now you might have to do Noah Khan did his tour and I'm pretty sure he scheduled it around when the teams were playing. Cause this guy, I'm pretty sure he's got a Jersey of every Canadian team now, just from going on. You're going to have to start planning your tour dates around where the Sens are playing. It seems like it's funny. I I literally for the first time ever because I mean like in the early days of touring, like we could never afford tickets, you know. So like it would, didn't even matter like if we had a day off in that city, like once in a while. But we'd know someone or someone would be a fan and know we're there and like get us tickets or something like that. But like it, so it just wasn't even a thing. But now I'm a little bit older. Like I'm like you know what I'm like. So I put in my calendar like all the tour dates and then like when there's like games close by, but there's a couple of close calls. I, I'm, I played Denver with Tokyo police club Ooh. like two days after um, Ottawa plays uh, the avalanche. That's pretty soon. Isn't that in yeah, a couple weeks? Up. Yeah. It's coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So I was thinking of going early to go to it. I literally yeah. was like, should I go early? But uh, it's too much other stuff. I, I, I get home from the first legged tour. Like, the day before so i'd have to just spend one day at home and then get going again and i like having three days at home so i was like oh, i can't do it but yeah, fair. but it's nice to be able to think about that they always get crushed in colorado anyway so i think you're safe <laughs> okay <laughs> not this year things are all changing i love it i love that energy i also love the energy on the new album and i want you to explain to me how it all came about like what was the inspiration between the album why we run 
Um, well, I hadn't, you know, really done um, an album, a solo album since Colorado ended. Um, that was really like kind of the music I grew up on. I'd always kind of wanted to make. I grew up on, you know, the the kind of alt country songwriter stuff. You know, my favorites growing up were like John Prine and Bob Dylan and stuff like that. And um, I feel like to make a record that is really kind of more stripped down and based on like the songs and the lyrics is being in the forefront. It's a little scarier because, you know, it's it's one thing to like make a song and an album around like loud, obnoxious rock, rock songs. Right. Um, and I stand behind all the songs that Colorado made, that's for sure. But um, there's a safety net in having my bandmates and, you know, the help writing the songs and not as much focus on the lyrics because the riffs um, and the energy can bring something. And I, I just kind of felt like I was finally ready to make a record like that where I can like, you know, call it my own and have pretty personal lyrics and, um, yeah, so it, it just kind of was time. Uh, so that's that's now. How different is the writing process compared to being in a band to being solo? Because obviously with the band, you've got different opinions, different uh, vibes, different ways you want to construct a song or write lyrics. But when it's on your own, do you find it easier to kind of you don't have to deal with all these uh, opinions and collaborate or is it a little harder not having people to bounce off of? Yeah, everything you said is correct. Um, so exactly all that. Like, you know, Nick Roger and, helps though. I bet. Oh yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I mean, he inspired one of the songs. That's for sure. Oh, nice. Nick, um, so yeah, Nick and I. Um, Nick and I are like musical partners, like life partners. We've, cool. we've we grew up on the same street in Manitou. I yep. gave him guitar lessons when he was like, I was like fifteen, and he was like. 11 or whatever or 10 nice. or whatever our age differences and um well i mean i gave him one guitar lesson he came back the next week and told me everything i showed him was wrong <laughs> <laughs> and you've been best friends ever since oh yeah yeah he's I mean, well you could just tell him you taught him what not to do that, that was your lesson <laughs> exactly no he came back then we joke he came back the next week and taught me about minor chords um <laughs> and yeah he's a musical genius he truly is and so working together like you know we bouncing ideas off each other that's how we worked our, our whole lives and even on this record like the song why we run we wrote that together we can't help ourselves and then all the other stuff too like i bounced off him so much like in but it was a more solitary process and really just like digging in uh, uh, by myself with a guitar for you know months on end um and there's something that i really really like about that and even just touring this record for the next month, like I'm going out like entirely by myself. I'm not bringing a crew or anything. So I'm doing uh, and just like getting up there by myself. Um, oh yeah, there's there's the shows if anyone's at those ones. So yeah, the first bunch I'm opening for uh, a great band called Elliot Brood. Okay. And then um, Denver there, uh, I get on with, uh, I'm opening up for Tokyo Police Club, Ooh. which are my dear old friends. So once again, like those shows, I don't even have a backup band. I'm just doing it like entirely by myself. Uh, and some of their big venues like Chicago, like St. Louis, like it's like House of Blues. It's like a, you know, 2000 person venue. So I've never played like entirely by myself with no band for maybe I've played like to three or 400. So putting it up to that level um, by myself, I'm really looking forward to that. And then uh, coming up and the next one there is those ones in Ottawa and Toronto. Those ones all have a full band. It's a really awesome band. I've gotten together for this, um, like a six piece band. And then the last two are super exciting. Uh, they're opening for um, another Ottawa, huge sense fan talk. Do you guys yep. know talk? Yeah. Yeah. He uh, performed at the all-star game, rocking the Alfie Jersey in Toronto. You have to respect that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, he's absolutely amazing. Uh, he does the new intro on, on the Jumbotron. I didn't know he did that. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah, we're, we have it, – it's a really cool story. Like, he grew up in Stittsville and grew up listening to Colorado. Um, oh, yeah. And it's so cool, like, when he asked me to have – to come play his show. So, I'm sure we're going to do some more stuff together and, you know, hopefully, um, you know, something involved with the sense together. 
Well, free awesome. idea. You got to open with danger flutes. That da, 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 na, na, <laughs> da, da, na, na, na. you got to you got to at least come out to that. Let the people. The Vancouver mm. is one of the road barns where there's the most sense fans when they play there every really? year. Really? Oh yeah. It just you could tell on TV. And I got to go to the outdoor game there when they played in in BC place. Obviously, that's a special event. People are going to travel in like I did for it. But yeah. it feels like that's a nice nice sense little niche there in vancouver okay good to know well yeah um is that what that song is called danger flutes danger oh yeah flutes. Yep. it is an uh, that would be my pump up song you know <laughs> and i hear that song i know it's showtime we lead off every win postcast starts with danger flutes it just yep. it gets the blood blood flow and it gets the heart rate up and i feel like you guys have to incorporate it somehow into an all ottawa show I'm gonna text Nick right now and uh, yep. and uh, see if see if that can happen. Hey, hey, even put your own little twist on it. But like once you hear that drop, it's just there's something special about it. Just like there is when you're at the CTC. <laughs> Menno's writing it down right now. We love that. Yeah, I just run on my notepad. Yeah, Danger that's Danger Flutes. Take note. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, hey, let's wrap it up with a little sense talk. Like, are you are you confident in playoffs this year? Are you just hoping they take a step forward? Like, what's yeah. the expectation for you? I try. I really, I really try not to have expectations. Like I'm, I'm, and I know it. I don't know what if, what kind of fan that makes me seem like. Like I love this team. I love supporting them through thick and thin. You know, I'm, I'm proud of that. Like I, I love them even when they're losing and they don't make the playoffs. And that I had a great time watching them. I had a great time cheering for them. I'm a fan, and that to me, like that brings me a lot of joy. I really would love to see them in the playoffs. I can't wait to see. Brady get lit on fire and just like show the NHL how it's done. Yeah. I, I just need to see that in the playoffs. And, and it, you know, and we all, we're all saying, Oh, we got to see Brady in the playoffs. Like, come on, Sandy, he's got it in him. Oh. Like that kind of playoff fire, that like extra, that extra gear. I think a lot of this team has that extra gear that we're going to see in the playoffs. And I just want them to have the chance to use it so much. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm not going to cry about it if they don't, well, maybe for a <laughs> Yeah, maybe a day. Maybe a yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe a day. day. But you know what? This is the year, guys, right? Are you feeling it? What are you guys feeling? I feel fantastic. I'm yeah. drinking the Kool-Aid. I yeah. was not that way on Saturday night. I was telling Thomas Shabbat he had to change his number, like just to change the feng shui. That's where I was at on Saturday night after we were at the Bell Center. But now it's look, not good. Yeah. this I is the league where you can't lose two, three, four games in a row. That's where you really fall off. So for them to battle, they gave up seven goals on 26 shots, Menno. You were there. You saw it. And to beat their opponent in a game like that, that shows heart over height, does it not? It really, really does. And Allmark is like, you know, that would have been a different game. It just would have. have And we can't put too much pressure on the guy. We just can't because he's not going to play the other games. You know, the team knowing they can win with the other goalies, the other goalies getting their confidence, they're going to have to play games. They are. There's there, And and they're going to have to deliver, and it's going to happen. And, you know, it's we're all going to be a little bit sweaty when it happens, but they're going to step up too. They really are. But having Allmark there to, like, you know, carry the, the, the brunt of the games is going to be a really great thing. Final question for me outside of Linus Allmark, because I think I know where you'd go otherwise. Who's your X factor? Who's the most important player for the Senators to have a successful year? I think Pinto. Yeah. I think I Pinto. Like I mean, I just saw your Instagram post too, but like yeah. uh, about him being the X factor. But I mean, he's great. You know, uh, he gets the crowd, he gets the crowd hyped, let's just say. Uh, <laughs> hey, what, what was what was Annie's rationale to get in the jersey? What'd she tell you when you're sitting at the send store and you're and she's picking the jersey and all of a sudden, oh, there's number she's twelve. In love with him. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to blame her, right? Yeah, yeah, no, no, he's the best. Like he just he seems like such a good guy and like and uh, he's such a great player. And God, his snipe in the first game. Oh, to God, keep on a two-on-one when you have the strong side, when your sticks towards the board, like yeah. that's confidence right okay, there. So. No, and like what a blast! And it, it was so nonchalant, and he's just cool. Yeah, you know, like uh, well, Menno, I've got something for you to track now this year, and you can pass this on to Annie as well because we've been doing this for about a year now. Watch yeah. his press conferences. 
Yeah. And time how long it takes for him to make himself laugh because it's usually about 15 seconds. It's it's no, awesome. Right. He's just an all all vibes first team kind of guy. Yeah, Ugh, amazing. Well, and you know that with a band too, right? Like you need someone to keep the spirits up, and it yeah. does feel like he's that kind of guy. Yeah, totally, totally. I think he's gonna bring a lot this season. I really, okay. really do. I thought he had a great game too on uh, on Monday. So he, yeah. when's the next and, one? Thursday. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, tomorrow yeah. against the New Jersey Devils, and they're on the ice for practice. No Linus Allmark today, so they're gonna have to. Hey, you, you said it, they're gonna have to win games without him this yeah. year. Do we know what's going on? A, a light strain, but I, I'm still burned from Hasek's adductor strain that lasted four months, so <sighs> I'm nervous. Is, is it time to panic? No, but is it time to be a little nervous? Yeah, I am. I'll, I'll <laughs> admit it. Oh, oh yeah. this is what we live for. Here guys. we go. Game Ooh. three, and we already have a <laughs> dilemma like this. My God. My yeah. goodness. Well, I really hey. appreciate there's... chatting with you guys as always. It's fun as hell. Oh, I love it, man. And I'm just going to pass on the note that everyone in Ottawa can go see Menno November 22nd at the Algonquin Commons Theater. And I expect you to be wearing your Linus Ulmark jersey for that <laughs> show. You know what? I think I'm going to do that. Amazing. Yeah, well, uh, hey, let's catch up right around then. Let's touch base throughout the season. You're involved. I want this to be an outlet for you to be able to talk about the sense. Uh, I'm into it. Are you, you guys, do, you you do your thing at uh, you do the, like a like a kind of meet meet up and drink. It's at I is it Irene's? No, I uh, Glebe Central, Central Pub. Glebe Central, Central Pub. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've got the shuttle that goes to and from the yeah, CTC. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's unreal. We sold out three buses for the home opener. No way. When's the next one of those? Well, they do the bus for every game, but yeah, we're going to plan a time throughout the year. So yeah. we'll be in touch with you before that because you said you have to get to more games in Ottawa. So yeah, let's yeah. make sure that you're there for that. It's an absolute yeah. blast. It really yeah. is. I should do one. Do they have a little stage? They yeah. certainly do. They do live music every Saturday night. So they've got the setup all, all ready for you. So I if you want to play, play a set, dude. Thing. I should come play the pregame thing. That, that would be, be so awesome. That would be fun. Yeah. This is your confirmation for doing it. I appreciate okay, it. The okay. papers are signed. We'll see you there. I mean, I just said it on the air. So, but uh, let's figure out a date and and figure out when we can make that work in the in the winter, and then I'll go to a game. That could be really fun. Love that. Men That's over Steeg, the lead singer, of the Men over Steeg band. You know him from Colorado <laughs> and a diehard Sense fan. Thanks for taking the time, man. We really love chatting with you. Uh, it's always the best, you guys. Thank you. Bye. All right, Pilsy. Six Taps to Benno for joining us. A reminder that you can check out his latest music below in the description. We linked it to that. And go see him on tour. Yeah. Sense fans, rocking out with Sense fans. Doesn't get any better than that. And stay tuned later this year. We made about 55 plans <laughs> with Menno, So hopefully we get to accomplish some of those. Great guy, great musician. Pilsy, any final thoughts on today's show? Final thoughts for me is Sense fans, I know it seems doom and gloom and it seems like uh, time to set into panic already, but we're two and one, guys. It's fine. It's only game four of the season. Let's not burn the house down so quickly here. I like that. That's a nice... Patience. Pillsy preaching patience. Pillsy preaching patience. It's never too early to look at the out-of-town scoreboard, though. Tonight, the Buffalo Sabres in Pittsburgh to take on the Penguins. And we're rooting for Colorado to get their first win of the season. They are hosting the Boston Bruins, where Mark Kastlick <laughs> is playing like a man possessed. This, this is... I mean, we knew that he had some offense in him from his junior days. But Mark Kastlick has five points in his first four games with the Boston Bruins. I mean, sometimes you just need a change of scenery, and uh, hopefully Boston's got that edge to him that he didn't necessarily have in Ottawa. Well, hey, we had him on the show. Great guy. We're rooting for yep. Mark Kastlick. So good to see his fourth line. They're six goals, four, zero against when they're on the ice so far Sheesh. this regular season. We'll continue to follow all the hashtag sends abroad. My final thought is stick taps as a goalie-friendly show. Oh, yes. Philip Gustafson scored a power play goal <laughs> in last night's win. And that means he, as a goalie, has more power play goals than the entire Toronto Maple Leafs this year. Incredible. I mean, and that was a beauty goal, too. He didn't waste any time. You knew that puck was going in the second it soared over center ice. So shout out Philly franchise, not only stopping the puck, but putting it in opponents' nets, too. Sheesh. Amazing. Power play specialist, eh? 
Also, he says now I should be in the power play meetings. That's what he said after the game. Fair point. Way to go, Lars. Hey, <laughs> love that. So uh, Gustafson does that, and he now has more overall goals than Austin Matthews as well. All right, that's it for us for today. Thank you very much for watching, listening, engaging with the show. Be a friend, tell a friend, and make sure to subscribe to Locked On Senators everywhere you get podcasts. We'll be back tomorrow with a game day preview. Sends and Devils underway at 7 o'clock. We'll have the postcast after the game as well. Martian, boots on the ground, and then he'll be on the postcast with us as well. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been another edition of the Locked On Senator Podcast. Your team every day.